conflict resolution, how not to kill your brothers. Can you plug me in there? No, not yet. Alright, what's good everybody? What's good? What's good, John? I'm trying to set up. Sorry we late, but because y'all complained so much about me eating chicken live on while I was doing the broadcast, we had to eat first. So that's what that was. I just eat right there. Right? And then there's that one right there? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's what that was, but we here, we getting it together. Again, sorry for the delay. Alright, what we got going on? Where's my favorite clip? Why is not showing me live? How do I do that? Man, why is it so dark? I don't know. Oh, that's good. We got plenty of light. Alright, so, first off, what's going on, everybody? Um, it's Thursday, October 27, 2016. Blessed to be alive, blessed to be here. Um, of course, I'm with my best friend, Big J. That's my partner, man. I'm going to say this too while he's setting up. He's still having technical difficulties. <laughs> you can't. This is what I want to say. Me and him agreed to do this thing together, man, for the betterment of the set. It ain't no his thing, my thing. This is our thing. We don't give a fuck about... I'm sorry. I'm starting to run. We don't care... Who channel you watch, who station you watch, or who you like more, or you know, John more serious than Cell. We, we, we don't. Do you give up? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's just to get that out there, man. This thing is, is bigger than, than me and him. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and uh, it just is what it is. Uh, so, I just want to say that. All right, my introductions. I'm Big Cell. I'm Black Dragon. Uh, FHO is HNIC. This is my movement, Fast Heart is Only. You can find me on YouTube at FHO Atlanta GA or my website, www.therealfho.com, T H E F R E A L F H O.com. Um, and I'm on Facebook all the time, clowning. My credentials are the fact that I ride my motorcycle. And the passion that I have for this set, I do care about rules and regulations. I do care about the history. I do care that the story is told correctly. Um, and I do care that it be continued in the tradition of the people that laid it down before us. So those are my credentials. Somebody asked me the other day, what degrees do I have in motorcycle? What degree do I have in motorcycle? Uh, ground founder. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> So that would be my degree in motorcycling. So is that is that fair? Ground I mean, if that's what it is, I don't give a fuck what it is. It, it, I, I don't care what people if it's qualified as a degree or not. I know my passion for this, and I know what I will do compared to what you won't do. So with that, I'm fine. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, so with that being said, uh, with that being said, mm -hmm. I'm gonna let John. Are you almost ready yet to set up? Man. Tonight's conflict, I mean, tonight's topic, conflict resolution. What up, Tony Clark? What up, Charles? JoJo. Anthony. Keisha, what up with it, Keish? We got to get you back on the show, Keish. Dolly, what up? Hey, I need everybody to share. Hit the share button in the left-hand corner and share this post. Let everybody know we on live and the whole nine yards. Serena, what it do? Um, and everything else. So... I think I got a bunch of people watching. I'm not sure. 36 so far. Uh, I can't call it sweet. I ain't making no, love, no noise. Ron, what it do? My man Ron Glover out there in the Virginia Seven Cities area. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, Topo, Topo Tupis. Oh, New Zealand. What up? We got New Zealand on. New Zealand? Yes. Uh, uh, New so Zealand. how do you say Topo Tupis? Is it Tupis? Topa, top, no, topo, 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 top
Write out how we say your name so we don't look Nate, like what up? Hey, Nate. Americans over here. Yeah, I got that ass today, didn't I, Nate? <laughs> That's All my right, partner, what's up, Nate, man. King, man, we got technical H-Town, issues. Two cool, just Terrence Dickens. Acting terrible. T-Rock, what it do? Simona, what it do? Brian, what up with it? Oh, we got something for you tonight, man. Nitty. My girl Nitty, my sis. Harley's Angels. One of the greatest MC female clubs. One of the greatest female motorcycle clubs. Oh, my bad. Man, why your thing gotta be showing my legs? Hey, man, I mean, shit, I don't know. You, you couldn't know. I mean, if you want me to raise it up, but ain't nobody really tripping, man. They didn't even know that was a leg. They thought it was a fish or something. I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> it's <easy. laughs> You got my legs on. Hey, do y'all want me to raise the camera up so I mean, see John Leg? Is John Legs defending y'all? I mean, you know. Is, is John Legs defending you guys? <laughs> My name is Black Dragon, National President of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. Since 1974 and still strong, we are a breed apart. We were born in San Diego, California, in a small neighborhood called Mount Hope, where we were seven black men who rode on Sundays. And we used to gather in each other's garages, uh, the original seven founding fathers. Um, and for the first two years, 1972, they got their motorcycle, one motorcycle, a Honda 305 Scrambler. And they used this Honda 305 Scrambler for everyone to learn how to ride. And then by another year or so and a half or so, they all had motorcycles and they would hang out at each other's uh, garages and tell lies and tales and things that you do as a biker. And then all of a sudden, the wives got upset and told them, you can no longer be in the garage. Yeah, so. They became their wives' worst nightmare and went out and got a motorcycle clubhouse at 4280 Market Street where they stayed for 39 years. In that time, uh, when they decided, well, what are we going to call ourselves? They said, well, we're seven black men who ride on Sundays. They called themselves the Black Sabbath. Once they became the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club, history was formed. So um, soon after, sometime in 1974 when that happened, before 1975, it went from a segregated club to an integrated club. We have brothers of all colors, ilks, kinds, religions, races, from all over the, the, the United States of America and soon to be all over the globe. The mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation extends its reach, its love, its brotherhood, and sends you all a great good evening. My name is Black Dragon. I am a writer and author technical advisor for the movie Biker Boys. Oh, yeah. You have to reject yeah. it, and then it... Yeah. Fuck. Well, I say, if you even had an answer, it would just... It would be the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. What up with it, It Sarah? happens every time. I didn't hey, mean to what up with it? I didn't curse the guy. So, um... Mm -hmm. So, um... We became integrated. Uh, when these people call me, they always throw me off. Uh, they call right in the middle of my show. It just really makes me mad. I got to get something to stop people from calling. I think uh, if you have a, an iPhone, you can actually stop people from calling you. But in, <laughs> so, in any event, um, uh, I'm an author and a writer, uh, and uh, do get my books: Prospects Bible at prospectsbible.com, Prospects Bible for Women at prospectsbibleforwomen.com. Uh, for Women's Motorcycle Clubs and the Motorcycle Club PRO's Bible at mcprosbible.com. My newest book coming out is going to be the Sergeant at Arms Bible, and that book is due out in November. All righty. Uh, we also want you to uh, get the um, magazine Get Yonder uh, at getyonder, Y O N D E R dot com. You're talking about the magazine? Yeah. You can spell it either way, Y O N D A. A Y O N D E R, it don't matter. And we also want you to get um, the um, the magazine Biker Life. Tiffany Primo, what up, Tiff? We want to say hello to Bad Breed Motorcycle Club in Romania. We got our boy over here in uh, where was that? New Zealand. New Zealand. We appreciate you all and everybody across the country. All right, so F H O G A and YouTube. Anthony, what it do, man? What it do? FHO uh, Atlanta GA. FHO Atlanta GA on YouTube. www.therealfho.com is the website. All right, we got, we got on here Felton Jack. What up with it? Uh, uh, my man Jack Polk Jr. Uh, Donteria Taylor, Puri, King Broke. When is the Road Captain book coming out? He said November. Tony Clark, what up with it? 
Corey Berry. Depending on the phone you have, you can set it on Do Not Disturb. Okay, we got that. All right, now, tonight's topic is how do you keep from killing your club brother um, conflict resolution? And this topic is going to be crazy because we're going to just act like what we're going to do tonight, we're going to act like that this problem does not exist in most clubs. That everybody in every club gets along no matter what. Everybody is a brother. When they come in, a brotherhood, and you have no issues and no problems with nobody in your club. That's what we're going to act like. Is that fine with you? Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that's fine with you. Okay. Well, uh, what I want to do is I, I want to uh, preface this by um, it was important for me to talk about this um, because um, hit the share button everybody hit the share buttons on both pages you guys are most likely going to have to view me on YouTube because this phone doesn't, just, doesn't I don't guess this phone wants to work so for uh, my Facebook folks, you guys are most likely going to have to view me at YouTube, Black Dragon National President, because this phone here is not wanting to work. I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, we are working on getting us a, a radio station a radio station, so that uh, we can get away from this, uh, this, this crap here. So uh, mm -hmm. last week this was <coughs> me as well. But anyway, I, I wanted to preface this with, um, so we have... It, those of you who remember me when I first started, I started this off by um, a, a, a video that I did in Macon, Georgia in April. And that video was about um, uh, violence on the motorcycle set. And there had been a shooting in uh, one of the clubhouses and I was just really going off about it. And that kind of set this whole thing off for me. Okay. And... Um, I have not touched upon that as much as I would like to, and and so with all of this um, this stuff going on, I wanted to get back to the the roots of what brought me here, and that that is some of the um, things that we would like to see fixed on the set. Um, in this, I have begun uh, reaching out to and getting getting. Uh, People coming to me from motorcycle sets all over the world, from uh, Romania, England, uh, Israel, just everywhere. And so it's been quite overwhelming. One, I knew we had motorcycle sets all over the world, okay. but two, I didn't really realize that we all follow the same protocol. And almost to the letter, with you know some exceptions, the protocol is pretty much the same. So if you're a biker in uh, Australia, you're probably going to be doing it like bikers in, in, in Atlanta in terms of protocol, respect, and how we, we should treat one another, etc. So there is going to be, what's up Uncle Pete? There's going to be um, ways that um, you go about getting um, into an MC set. There's going to be ways to get out of an MC set. There's going to be ways that members of all these things, all these different ways that things are done, are germane to motorcycle sets across the country. And another thing that is germane is how we... Wait, 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 wait. Stop using the big words germane. What does germane mean? Are we talking about Jermaine Jackson? You kidding? I'm just you gotta, you gotta explain that, man. Jermaine, you can't listen, man. You can't be using the big ass words that I told you, man. Uh... The yeah. things that are the same okay. Okay. on the motorcycle set okay. as one another, we okay. would say Jermaine. And I'm not saying that my audience is dumb. I don't say we're not, we're not, not saying that y'all dumb. Whatever we're, you do, don't say that. <laughs> we're just <laughs> so so uh, we uh, we 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 look at many things that are the same. And one of the things that that as an MC is that an MC is a brotherhood, and this brotherhood is is garnered by. The fact that we trust, I, and I, you see this we thing, we trust that the MC is going to treat us certain ways based upon our membership, our sacrifice, our duty, our dedication, 
our honor, our respect, and our participation. Well, hold on. Okay. So, when you have this expectation, the seven expectations based on what you built, when someone, for some reason, tramples upon that, or gets a pass because they're your brother, or gets a buy that they won't wouldn't normally get, or gets uh, some sort of um, uh, dismissal. Yeah, but I want. Hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. Hold on. Okay. Let me finish the thought out. After so many of these, um, these, these these insults, these disrespect, these, after so many passes, an anger can build. An anger can build that can make you want to kill somebody. And one of the things I want to talk about tonight is, and we talked about it a little bit, but some of the things that causes this anger, some of the things that causes this conflict, some of the things that we can do to stop it, and, and what the MC should be doing in terms of old school MC protocol. Now, my question was, or my, my breakdown was this. I think the biggest thing is you, we, we have to explain is that what he was saying with the passes, what do you mean by you give, you're give giving passes based on the fact that, hey, you're in this fraternity, you're in this MC, you're in this brotherhood. Um, let's, let's, let's explain that. For me, they can't get you on YouTube for some reason. Oh, because I'm not on YouTube. Oh, I'm not on YouTube tonight. I'm strictly on Facebook. I'm sorry. It will be broadcast later, so you can go to John's YouTube tonight. Um, but Black you, Dragon National President. You can go to my YouTube and just subscribe to the channel, though. I appreciate that. And subscribe to mine. Yeah, and subscribe to his as well. So what I was saying is this: before you get to the point to where you're giving these passes. When you join a motorcycle club, when you when you come into this private this private society of brotherhood, okay, it's just like everything else we got out here, the Masons and and, and all the doctors got clubs, the lawyers and judges got private clubs, the boys and the boys club of America. Anyway, when you come into these private clubs, you're automatically given a a pass on who you really are character-wise, who you really are responsibility-wise, uh, even to the fact of we're going to overlook, we're going to even overlook any addiction you may have because you're coming into this brotherhood. Now, a lot of clubs make you pro being prospect and go through all that. All oh, traditional MC. All traditional MC. But once you go through that, you're in. So now, whatever my brother has or whatever this new member or my, my new brother has, to this family, we have to learn to deal with it, and we have to learn to accept it as is. It, a lot of shit, like I said, I, and I tell people this all the time, if you really want to know who a person is, let them join your MC. While they're prospecting and probing, he's going to be the best person you ever want to be. He's going to be a clean person. He's going to be a person that rides his motorcycle. He's going to be the one that's always first to fight. He's going to be all of that when he's trying to join, when he's trying to prospect. But you give them them colors, and now you get to see who he really is. So, with, with that, with, 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 with all of that, I want you guys to understand, when we talk about this conflict resolution, understand this, is that you have to have an allowance mindset to understand that, hey, Big John Black Dragon is my brother, is my pal, but do I know him? enough to be able to tolerate uh, whatever inconsistencies or whatever well you know even more than that yeah when someone passes into the brotherhood whether you just gave them their colors or whether they prospected for mm -hmm. them whether you passed them over or whether there was a ceremony there is an expectation that that person is everything that you expected them to be, hoped that they would be, or you yourself are. So, the first thing you have to think about is, you got to remember, until you truly get to know someone, through the test of friendship, bonds, and time, 
They're just like any regular person out on the street that just got some colors on. Can you get? Okay, how, is there a time limit on getting to know There's somebody? no time limit on getting to know somebody. You know, a, a husband and wife can be married 30 years, and then he can become completely mm -hmm. brand new. And, and, and so people change. And, and sometimes people are great to start off with and are not so great later, or, or whatever more metamorphosis that takes place in their life. But the thing you got to understand is, when you come into the situation with blind trust, instead of requiring people to do the same things you would require them to do to earn that trust any other place, you're setting yourself up for a letdown and a failure, and that failure can be so devastating that you want to hurt or kill somebody. For instance, uh, and I've seen this happen before, hey man, uh, I'm going out of town, I need you to look over my wife and make sure my wife and kids are fine. What the fever? Now, it doesn't <laughs> dawn on you that uh, this might not be your brother where that is concerned. Okay. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it in the MC where um, someone has um, uh, uh, done some shady stuff. To a wife or? To a wife or a girlfriend or whatever the case may be. Listen, if you're watching me on Facebook and I'm freezing, this phone is freezing, go to Black Dragon National President and watch me over there. If this phone goes out again, I don't know if I'm going to try to bring it back up. Nate says the lifestyle is not, it's because the lifestyle is not private anymore. Brenda says everyone gets colors these days because all these clubs want, all what they want is this quantity, not quality. And uh, she said quality, but I think she meant quality. So the thing about it is, these are things that we cannot change, period. MCs want to get big, MCs want to grow, and MCs want to go coast to coast and nation to nation. I, I want my MC to be all over the world. So that means you naturally open up to more people than perhaps you did when you were seven guys on the corner and you were the original seven. So as long as there is internet and fast travel and you can be on an airplane and be in the next country in 10 minutes and rent a motorcycle over there and ride all over, there is a big, good possibility that your MC could spread all over the world. So now we have to think about processes that make us able to interact with one another and still develop the bond of the friendship but not get so invested in someone that when they screw over you with the love, honor, and respect, they don't do the correct things you get mad enough that you want to kill him. Now, okay. What are some of the things that would make you want to kill a club brother? So, when I talk to bikers all over the world, and they call me up, uh, uh, and this guy says, I'll take five solid brothers, more than 50 that I don't know, that and that don't know my name. Hindu T, what up with it? And, uh, of course, that happens, uh, but when your motorcycle starts to club grow, you know, very few motorcycle clubs stay at a solid five brothers. It just, it just doesn't happen in today's society. Of course you take five brothers. I would, too. But you got 25 brothers that are coming to, to, to be a part of it. And I'm sorry, but a three-month prospect ship or a one-year prospect ship or even a five-year prospect ship that I endured doesn't necessarily mean that you know who you're dealing with. Like I say, people can be married for 20 years and turn brand new on each other. But when motorcycle clubs call me from all across the country and all across the world and they want to talk about things that are going on, the first thing that they are when they call me is hurt. They're heartbroken. Their hearts have been destroyed. A trust has been broken. They've been disrespected. They've been lied to, stolen from, or the bylaws have not been applied properly from one person to the other. These people have given their hearts, and they've given their souls, and they've given their trust to the MC. Okay. And not really realizing necessarily that the MC is made up of human beings, made up of regular people. People who lie, BS, fall short, you know. Nothing is more disappointing than to have a president that falls short and doesn't uh, give you, as a president, what you expect him to see. You see your president drunk on the road, riding his motorcycle drunk, things like that, 
stealing your girlfriend, when you see that coming from your president, it's absolutely devastating. Okay. So one of the first things is you have to you have to uh, you have to think about how you're going to um, tamp down your ability, uh, tamp down your um, um, man. These people with these phone calls—it's just really killing me here. One of the things too, why he, why he you, you have to think about yeah, yeah. how you're going to 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 throttle down your um, um, desire or your 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 heart. You, you're opening up your heart immediately from day one. Maybe you should rein in yourself and take some time to really get to know people before you put so much trust in them that you allow them to break your heart and hurt you. Well, one of the things too is this: I tell people this all the time. Prospecting is not for the MC. Prospecting is for the individual who's joining the MC. I disagree with that. You disagree with that? Oh yes. I mean, it's okay. Well, put it like this: if I'm a person joining the MC and I'm watching and I'm looking and I'm learning and this is the MC that I want to join, as a man, I already know what I need and what I want and what I and why I'm even in this here to join this MC. I already know what I want. And if I'm watching and I'm looking and they're not giving me what I want, then that's the, that, at that time is where is where it says is where I say I make a decision to not. I mean, you you're a perfect example of that. Five years. If it had other been for what you wanted instead of what the MC wanted, would you be a black dragon? I mean, would you be uh, you know a so black Sabbath? Prospecting uh, is for two purposes. Okay. One, for the MC to evaluate my suitability to be a member. And the second is for me to evaluate the MC's suitability to be in my life for the rest of my life. It's a two-way street. And in order for me to prospect for five years, the MC had to allow me to be around for five years. So it was still a two-way street. I got you. So it wasn't about me, my, 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 me, me, me. It was about we. The MC didn't feel like I had what it took to be a member. And so there's two choices, to continue to earn my way in or go to the myriad of other, other MCs that were offering me a uh, uh, free pass. And every MC around wanted to offer me a free pass. But it wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to belong to the Black Sabbath Nation. So I continued to work and show myself approved. And one day, some 20 some years later, I became the leader of the nation. For so for me it was an, a wonderful investment. The five years. The five years. Because I was able to see everything and 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 when I treat people a certain way in the MC or I think about how people must be handled in the MC, I'm able to do that because I had such a hard time getting in. So I can when people are crying to me, oh my God, I, this, this, listen, I don't want to hear how unfair things are for you. I've seen things as unfair as they could possibly be. <laughs> Five years, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I don't want to hear you crying. I, it, it really doesn't matter to me. All right, so subjects that can cause conflicts or situations that can cause conflicts. We already agree that the girlfriend, the set, the set uh, girlfriend, the wife, etc., those are mostly your biggest MC conflicts, if we are not agree. Okay. So, how do you deal with a brother? And, and, and this is my. Well, those opinion. are MC conflicts for non-traditional MCs. For non-traditional MCs, yeah, traditional MCs don't have that. Traditional MCs, um, women are in a, in a in a situation where they're not causing conflicts in traditional so. MCs. I think so. What do y'all say? I'm telling you that women cause conflicts in. In all traditional and non-traditional, OMC, OMG, hell, yeah, whatever it is, it is women. Women have, since the beginning of time, have been causing that kind of conflict. Well, when we think about what really causes conflict between men, okay. Number one, competition. Number two, jealousy. 
Was it you that told me in the beginning you had uh, uh, heaven and earth and you had the problem with Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. And then after that problem was over, one of the first stories out of the book, uh, out of the book was how Cain slew Abel. Was that you who said that? No, I don't know Somebody that. told me that. And they said, uh, uh, so what that meant to us is that, one, is there's going to always be conflict between brothers. Okay. Two, yeah. there's always going to be jealousy. Okay. And, and that, the Bible sets us up for the rest of the story of mankind. So if we have, if we have jealousy, competition, testosterone, youth. T from T. Alcast Wilkins said it's money. More than women. You saying money more than women, T? Money is what always causes conflicts in the MC. I mean, I can see that based on the fact that uh, that you're saying that um, you know, like what John was saying, when you feel like you've been stole from, and there was you didn't pay your dues, and um, you know you didn't put in this and put in that, and they can't give you a treasurer report or the old good one. The treasurer leaves and takes all the money, or the vice president, or you know. But that's, that's not that's, the that's not so much. If the treasurer leaves or somebody leaves, they don't cause that constant conflict that comes in. That constant conflict that comes in comes from um, you got somebody with you. You're with them. You're competing. You're fighting. You're warring. Whatever the case may be, and that person is drumming up in you this desire to fight them, get them back. So some of the stuff I've seen, like a president has to make a decision and that decision is to remove your colors. Okay. And there's been a vote and your colors have to go. So now you want to come back and shoot the president. Okay. Um, or you and a brother get to arguing in the clubhouse, you pull out a gun and level it towards the brother and try to take his head off. So would so would would it be safe to say that the sergeant arm is is going to have more conflict than any regular member? Oh, definitely. Okay. And in my video where I said uh, the, the video I just did, sergeant at arms duties of the sergeant at arms, the uh, sergeant at arms is the one that has to manage conflict in the club. His conflict resolution skills have to be uh, on par. Okay, this is a good one right here. Um. Regina says some guys want guy time. Some guys want guy time. They don't want wives with them and the guys every time you turn around. And usually if the wife is always there, she's probably putting her two cents in more than likely. So what she's saying is the brothers, when they come around, they, they you know, they want to be around their brothers and every time they come around you got your wife with you. And most like not most likely she has gotten comfortable enough to where she starts speaking more than what she should. Yeah, but that's not typically likely to have you kill your brother. Okay. What has you killing your brother? What makes it to where you want to kill your brother? One of the things is could be extreme jealousy. You're looking at this guy. Uh, he's doing great. You don't even know why you hate him, but you do. Um, another is maybe some guy's taking advantage of his situation as president or road captain and... Uh, one thing I've seen people get very angry about is the perception that the club is being unfair to them and giving someone else a break that they're not getting. Okay. Some guys are bullies. They like to uh, bully on people that, that uh, are smaller than them or whatever. You got a guy in the club and people just keep calling him a, a, a certain name. In fact, uh, I remember when uh, I was prospecting, there was a guy that... Um, kept calling me a very unseemly name. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, I can't even repeat that name on, uh, on video. But it, uh, mm -hmm. he, because I, I didn't necessarily talk like one of the cats from the hood, I come from Oklahoma, I wore a cowboy hat, dumb stuff like that. I had this, this way of talking, um, I was an engineer. Uh, a lot of cats didn't think I was tough enough. Mm. They thought I might run at the first hint of some trouble, or or didn't think that uh, perhaps I would hang around to uh, uh, to be there. So they kind of mistook me. They thought I might be that guy you push around on a little bit. So 
this guy, uh, I, I was, uh, at that time, I was a six degree black belt. So on my license plate, on my motorcycle, I had Rokudan, which stands for six degree black belt. So because I was a prospect and I was in the military, I was used to, to not, to not questioning authority. And so these guys had the authority. So this guy took to calling me Roku, instead of Roku Dan, Roku the P word. Okay, what the fuck is the P word? You know the P word. No, we don't. We, uh, you know, the cuss word for vagina. Oh man, this man. So they started calling you Roku Pussy? Thank you. Okay. This guy started calling me that. And every time he called me that, he would scream it out loud so the whole motorcycle club visitors. Yeah, well, yeah. Instead of Prospect Seven, yeah. hey Roku. Pussy. Why do you why do you do that? I mean you left it wide open. <laughs> uh, Roku pussy. I mean that's yeah. what the fuck is Yeah, he would call me that. And the disrespect I'm trying to prospect into the motorcycle club. He is a senior brother. Okay. I'm supposed to give him respect. And here he's calling me this name. And I and I, I was like, this guy doesn't even know what Roku Dan stands for because if he did, he would understand that I'm not that brother to F with. Okay. But I was respectful and I didn't want to get put out of the MC. So I let this guy go on with this for a few weeks. Okay. I started to get so angry, all I could think about was how I was going to kill this guy. I started to get so angry, all I could think about is, he's going to call me that one more time, and I am going to truly hurt him. And so, as this anger for this disrespect built up, one day, this guy called me it and it was I was at my snapping point and so I turned around and I thought to myself I'm gonna kick his head off his entire shoulders and instead there was a sign about nine feet tall above my head in front of the Black Sabbath at 4280 Market Street I spun around and kicked that sign and it went and then I came back with another kick. And I looked at him in the eyes and I said, if you ever call me that again, I will kill you dead. So, not to cut you short, but this had to be weight, like 200 pounds of weight. <laughs> <laughs> so I became known as the brother who could kick that sign. Okay. And so, uh, I got fat and couldn't kick that sign in 2010 when I went back. So, in 2012, I went back and I kicked that sign. And in 2013, and in 2014. And this year... We have not kicked no motherfucking sign nine feet in the air. Listen, man, this one thing about this show, we're going to keep it 1,000. You understand me? You got some money? I don't got no. You, you have not kicked no sign. Somebody from San nine Diego, please feet tell this in the guy air. that I Knock kicked. it off. Now, somebody from San Diego, said, somebody please tell sorry, him. Sorry, but we way off topic. Conflict on the most part starts from outside the club, from the streets. No, we're talking about conflict between brothers. That's That was, uh, we, we get that one. That one's coming in another uh, video. But this one was conflict between brothers. And we can't act like that doesn't exist because it actually does. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're going to keep it 1,000. You know, little nine feet in the air kicking. Listen, man. Listen, man. Listen, listen. I, you don't think I kicked that sign? You're telling me right now, today, nine feet in the air, you can jump up. And I didn't kick say it. jump. What did you? How are you gonna kick it then? Flat footed. So you. So you telling me one foot on the ground, the other foot on, and you gonna kick a sign nine feet in the air? Yeah. So now you one of the people that can lick your own toes, then, huh? No. If you can kick a damn sign nine feet in the air, you should be able to lick your own toe. Man, I, the disrespect here. Is, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I'm saying, man. You right now. Anyway, man, we gonna lick your toe. All right, so. <laughs> wow. So, 
conflict. Well, uh, maybe it was eight feet in the air. How about four feet? No, no, see. <laughs> How about the fuck that? How about it? The sign is really full. How about the sign really just sitting on the ground? Right? Why, why did, I mean, I'm so hurt by this. I'm just saying. How about that? But anyway, uh, so what? What have hurt your feelings is that I can still do it to this day. No, no, it ain't gonna hurt my feelings. I mean, I'm glad you don't want to talk. I'm glad to know I got a friend that can jump up and kick jump. it off. You keep saying jump. Okay, well, kick. Hey, I'm glad to know I got a friend that can kick the shit out of somebody. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? That's nine feet tall. So if Shaquille O'Neal walk in the room talking shit, John, kick him for me. <laughs> kick him in his head, John. You know what I'm saying? Let's, it, <laughs> let's resolve the conflict, bro. You, you hurt me. Oh, uh, so now you're going to show me the I, I have to show you the picture. Oh, man, come on. Anyway, anyway, so back to the point. Now, you this this situation with this particular guy yeah. made you... Contemplate. It made me contemplating actually killing him. Okay. He he made me that angry with his disrespect. Okay. I I was surely a prospect and I was surely uh, a low low ball in the club and nobody knew me. But I was still a man. And sometimes when people disrespect your manhood, disrespect who you are as a person, disrespect what you are. So how do you level that out? How do you level? The fact that I'm a man in the club, but I'm trying to be a prospect and and be, and like you said, take the, the, the prospecting, hazing or whatever you want to call it or whatever from the the older brother. Or the well, well, first of all, I would say so. When we go back to a traditional MC, uh, where the protocol comes in is, what should the MC have done? They hear this idiot calling me such a disrespectful name. I remember. We had a guy that was in our club, and uh, he was always whining. So they wanted to give him as his nickname, Crybaby, instead of Biker Seven or or uh, or, or or Big Cell or whatever the case may be. They wanted to call him Crybaby, and I was like, "So, what kind of respect do you think you'll be paying this guy if you think you're going to make his club name Crybaby?" So, as a president, I stopped that from going on. Okay. But I had remembered way back to my time of being disrespected and how I felt and how I really had intended on hurting that guy. And I don't know to this day why I didn't hurt him, but it was definitely in my heart to do so. Because you was worried about kicking a nine feet tall sign. That's why you hurt him. It, it was the closest thing, and uh, it got the point across. Okay. I've always been gentle. As a man, you should have, have asked him to not address you like that. Okay. So, what up, Rita? I got my girl, sis Rita, on here. Bruce. Okay, so my question, Bruce, is this. You're trying to be in the club. You're prospecting. Some people prospect a little different. Some people even allow other people to admit or, I ain't going to say misabuse or whatever their prospects. Um, as a man, though, it, at, at what point does that does that become a problem? At what point does that cause conflict? Because, like I said, um, well, it it causes conflict at the point that you want to hurt somebody. So the the premise of of the conversation was, I had made up my mind that I was getting ready to take this guy down. I didn't. I got to the point, I didn't care about prospecting or anything else. Okay. It so upset me the way this person acted and treated me yeah. that I wanted some reciprocity. Okay. I wanted to hurt that cat, take these colors and show them. I'm getting ready to hurt this guy. Okay. And um, that was the only thing that consumed my mind. So I had truly made up my mind that I was going to hurt this individual. And I had truly made up my mind I was going to try to kill him. Because he mistook me as a man. And because I was proper and respectful and trying to figure out, what did I do wrong to make this guy not like me? Okay. Uh, who liked, who didn't like me for anything I hadn't done to. I didn't, hadn't done anything to this guy. So, um, so when you think about conflict resolution, I'm not thinking about you're going to go to prison. I'm not thinking about you're going to spend time in jail. I just wanted to hurt this guy. So some of the things I, I, would, I would say is 
all those folks that were around and watching this go on, a lot of times brothers in the MC, they want to see how tough someone is or they, 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 they don't take care of the smaller people around like people are some kind of way expendable, disposable. And when you have an MC with expendable and disposable and throwaway people, you have an MC that just began to die. You have an MC that. So you're saying so? So, although I'm a prospect, the president, vice president, whatever, should have some level of care about how I'm being treated. Well, most certainly, you are the lowest member on the totem pole. Yeah. And when I said that word member, a lot of people get upset. What the hell do you mean a prospect's a member? But in my uh, idea, a prospect is most certainly a member. Okay. One, he wears your patch. Well, a hang around. Part of it, is partially, or whatever. Well, part of it, are you going to let somebody whoop your prospect's butt and say, you're only going to protect part of his butt when he's getting it whooped? Uh, we're only going to protect a piece of him because he's only a part of us. Mm. Are you going to roll around there and be like, you're not touching our brother? Prospective brother, prospect really to me means he has been voted on He's responsible for the bylaws. In many cases, they pay dues. And if they break the bylaws, they'll be punished. So they're a member in training or a member in probation. Okay. Which is what we call them probies. They're under probation, but they are ours. Now, hang around, that's not ours. He's not got my patch on. But a prospect does. So you darn sure owe that prospect every bit of civility and respect that's because he's respecting you. He's respecting your MC, and he's respecting your vision, and he's respecting um, uh, the love that you have uh, for for the MC, just like you do. Hey guys, how about an application to get some idea about the person? I mean, all of that's part of most MCs. You have to fill out an application um, to be a part of it. They ask you questions, um, you know, the whole nine yards and. Even the person that you that's bringing you in should have some type of knowledge of who you are, or, you know, your character, you know, what kind of person you are. But again, none of that is is actual ever proven until you start hanging around. I don't care. I could be. It's just like I tell, just like I tell my daughter, and I tell whatever. You're never gonna know a man until after you fuck, because a man gonna play whatever game he gotta play. Whether well, he gotta wait one day. Ten days of one year. If all he want to do is fuck, and you are the mark, he's going to play whatever. He's going to be as nice as he want to be. He's going to be a true gentleman. He's going to be opening up car doors. He's going to be calling you FaceTime. He's going to be doing all of that. But if you really want to know what this nigga is, slide him a shot of ass and watch how fast he turned into the person that he was really supposed to be. And I'm not telling y'all women to go out there. I was. I'm, not, uh, I'm just telling you. The scenario. Look, I'm, I'm speaking on a, a not a scenario, but I'm speaking on a, a meta, what they call a meta, metamorphically, metamorphically, or whatever the fuck the word is. Speaking. That's all, <laughs> what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. But here we go with the sign. Okay, that sign. That's about. Uh, I'm six feet tall. Okay. Six foot four. That's about. Uh, and that's really not true. You can't really see your whole face. Anyway. Uh, Yep, that part. They can come into the club. Can y'all, look, y'all, they can't see your face. <laughs> That's, I mean, who else wears a black cowboy hat? That don't mean that I'm they're six you. feet tall and the sign. You know what, man? You remember what I had it. I, I Eric, can't get no respect. Eric, no, sir. Eric say, Eric, my man, Eric, uh, President uh, L.A. Gentleman, I believe. Eric say, where you go, Eric? He says, the chemistry of a club changes when new members are added. You think so? Yeah. The chemistry of the club certainly changes when new members are added. Okay. But, you know, you see a lot of times the MC eggs things on. The guys that, ooh, he talk, we, we get this from the, from, the, from the schoolyard. But when we get older, that kind of stuff gets people hurt. Yeah. So what is it that we do? You have been stewing and... I remember, like I'll never forget it, like I was stewing, I wanted to hurt this guy. He kept on disrespecting me. 
how do you stop somebody from doing that? What is your job, protocol-wise? In the MC, in, in most MCs I know, there is a rule that says no two people can, can two, fight. Yeah. Two guys fight, they're out. Two club brothers. You can't fight another club brother. So, um, um, this guy said, that person may possibly have to have your back in a tight squeeze. Why would you do something that would make them resent you forever? You know, Uncle Pete, a lot of folks think that what they're doing is um, permissible. They've gotten along away with it for so long. They've been so jerkish for so long and no one has stopped them that they don't actually even realize that these, some of these arrogant folks, that a time would come by where someone would have to have your back. And they're wearing your cut on and they really got to think, you know, do I really want to have this guy's back? This is the same guy that's been calling me Roco P-word all this time. So, um, so a traditional MC protects its people. It protects its members, great and small, strong and weak, large and not so large. It protects them. And so when you see someone being unduly hazed, now there's some hazing everyone takes. Here's hazing. Get on your motorcycle and ride down to Mexico and bring me back a taco. Mm. That's 18 miles from San Diego. Oh, okay. You ride down to Mexico. I thought you just done in Atlanta. No, I don't. It's 18 Atlanta, miles. Let me just talk but about here's the thing. It's 18 miles, so it's 20 minutes into Mexico, 7 minutes to get a taco. Then you get that taco and you come yeah, back. Man, I'll you get that. You get that um, uh, taco and you come back to the border. But now the border can take you two hours, three hours, or four hours to get back across the border. Yeah. So you get back across the border and you drive back to the clubhouse in San Diego. And the brother says, where's my taco? You give it to him and he eats it. And he says, this taco was almost fantastic. And you say, almost fantastic? He goes, yeah, but it's cold. Go back to Mexico and get me another taco. So, back to Mexico, you ride, 20 minutes to get there, get that taco, four hours to get back. You've been riding all day. You stop at 7-Eleven and you warm the taco up. You come walking in, he opens the taco, the taco's piping hot. He eats it, he loves it, it's delicious. Hey bro, yes sir, you like the taco? I love it, where's my receipt? Go back to, San Go back to Tijuana and get me a taco and get me a receipt. No, all this is with your money now. He's paying for that. Uh, he paying for gas and taco? Actually, at that time, I think it was my my money. But, you know, gas was a dollar Say, a gallon man, back I tell then. you what, man. Tell, 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 tell you what, man. Take you and your hot taco ass. No. No, no. Own somewhere. No, no. Me. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. But for me... So, hold on. So, what I'm saying is, that's hazing. Okay. Okay. So now take your butt back down there and get me a receipt. So now you've been down to Tijuana three times. It's taking you all day and into the night. He's got a hot taco in his receipt. And he says, okay, so now you know. Whenever you're dealing with the club, you turn in the receipt. Whenever you're dealing with a brother, you handle things properly. Okay. This, is, this is hazing. Okay. Let me tell you what hazing isn't. Okay. You're a coward. You're a weakling. You're a piece of crap. You ain't shit, excuse my language. This is not hazing. This is disrespect. Some people don't get the two things together. To me, disrespect is when you ask me to do something in public that is going to call in the character, my question, my character, or, or, or my manhood, or, or, or my self-respect. So I did a video called, When Can the Prospect Say No to the MC? Mm. When does a prospect tell the without, MC? Without losing his... his is. Oh, at that point, you really don't give a darn. Okay. And I, a lot of it has to do with the difference between hazing and teaching okay. and hazing and sadomasochism. Okay. Some idiot who wants to get off, he probably didn't prospect himself or didn't even really finish, and he wants to get off by belittling and demeaning you. I Or it could be simply you dating the girl that he like, or the girl that like that he won't don't like him like you. Then you're probably but he's still gonna do that by belittling, belittling yeah, and demeaning you. So that can make you want to kill somebody. All right, Garland says, okay, let me see where is this. Uh, they said, where was your sponsor? Uh huh. 
While all of this was going on and you were brewing, what was your sponsor? So there are a lot of uh, MCs whose sponsors need lessons. And mm -hmm. um, that's something that uh, we need to talk about. I have a book coming out. You know, I have a book for everything. But I do have a book called The Sponsor's Bible to teach sponsors how to protect prospects. Because I prospected for a long time. So I saw that in a very bad way. Cobra says, you, you address disrespect the very first time you feel disrespected. If you allow disrespect, you deserve to be disrespected. You never deserve to be disrespected. You can never deserve to be disrespected. You can be ignorant about getting your respect. You can be not so smart about getting your respect. But for someone to say, because you allowed yourself to be disrespected, you deserved it, it's like telling a woman you got raped and you deserved it. When somebody because you had on the, on the little bit of that thing. Or something, yeah. Okay. But no one ever deserves to be mistreated. And this is where the MC can needs to change that. Um, the, the, the better statement is, if you allow yourself to be disrespected, you will you be can disrespected. Be, yeah, you can. But that disrespected. you deserved it? So then that does the guy deserve to be killed when I kill him. And you go to the court of law and say, well, I deserve to be disrespected and he deserved to be killed. Yet that it doesn't work that way. No one deserves to be mistreated for any reason on earth. And when you see this mistreatment, and I remember when I was a kid one time, uh, somebody pushed me, and that kid's dad said, push his ass again, he's just a punk. And uh, That's that, when you learned how to kick nine feet in? Uh, uh, then subsequently, I <laughs> went to karate school after that, so that I couldn't get pushed anymore. <laughs> but I didn't stop me from getting called that name. But the, the idea is, what's this a parent talking about? push him he deserves to be pushed so now his son yeah. has spent the last 23 years in prison okay so you know he pushed the wrong person he pushed the wrong person all right so again what, what, what we all know that everybody got different stories of what what took them to the limit and their MC if you if you remain if you, if you were able to remain or if you were if it was just too much for you and you left because of the disrespect, or you left because you felt like you did want to kill one of your brothers or, or kill this cat or, you know, whether he was somebody you knew or didn't know. So right now, um, I, what I want to do is, I want to open up the phone line, let me use my phone, open up the phone lines, and I want you guys to call in so that we can discuss what it is that caused the conflict and how did you handle it. Um, and, and at what point, like I said, at what point did you did you stay in the MC or did you handle it and had to leave the MC? All right, 424-242-2444. Uh, five, five. Holla at your boy, man. I just put the number on the screen, too. 424-242-2355. Four, two, four, two, four, two, two, five, five. If you had, if you were in a club, prospecting for a club or whatever, and you were, you were, whatever it was, disrespected or whatever, beyond repair. How did, what did you do to keep from, to keep from killing that other individual? Let me see, let me get off here and prepare to get these phone calls. All right, 424-242-2355. I'm waiting. Is that thing got the uh, speaker on? Yeah, it got it. A patch member can't make a prospect do anything they wouldn't do, which may not be saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, that part. I've been following your channel for some weeks. Very informative talk about duty of MC. 424 oh, he wants to talk about the duty of an MC treasurer. I'm going to give you that one, bro. Yeah. That's coming. Right now, we're talking about how not to kill a treasurer for stealing your money. <laughs> <laughs> The treasurer that ran off with all the money. So how do you not kill him? Okay, nobody calling in? Nobody calling in? Are they asking us still? 424-242-2355. Oh. Five, five. I think I'm on. Let me see. I think I'm on. Let me see. 
While you're sitting there, share this. Hit the share button in the left hand corner. I just, oh, you know, I'm going to turn power saving off. Yeah, my bad. What is it? Gray. I'm clearing out all the stuff on my phone for these guys. Man. Alright, what's good, man? Oh, I gotta answer this. Accept, press 1. To send a voicemail. Alright, here we go. What we got? What we got? What up, B.I.G.? What's going on, big homie? It's your world, my brother, Black Dragon. How you doing, Black Man? What's up, my brother? It's your world. First, I want to commend you, gentlemen, for doing what you're doing and, and bringing up a thing that you're taking the time to educate the public about some of this madness that's going on on the bike side. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, now let me ask you this, um, yeah, you've been around now for a minute, um, and you've seen, you've seen the MC go up, go down, you've seen brothers come and go, you've seen different things manifest into situations that could have been handled different. At what time do you think that it was, or, or at what point does it become the responsibility of the MC versus the responsibility of the individual. Well, it depends on the situation. For instance, if you're dealing with a conflict that's internal to the MC, I think it's appropriate for it to be addressed with the MC protocol. If you're dealing with a conflict that's with an individual, then I think it's important that you talk to that individual on a man-to-man -man basis versus implementing or bringing the MC into it. Because typically when you bring the MCs into it, you're going to have a lot of egos, you're going to have a, hard t a lot of hot-tempered individuals who might not be able to respond to the voice of reason. So anytime you have an opportunity to communicate with an individual on a one-to-one -one basis, excluding the MC, I think you have a better chance of resolving whatever that conflict may be. Because remember, I see all kind of crazy situations out there on the bike set. And a lot of times, a lot of these situations can be resolved with basically a 30 second conversation. A mm. 30 second conversation because a lot of times conflict resolve or evolve over misinformation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I, we, we, I truly appreciate you um, for even calling in. I want you to know that because of you, because of how uh, you've always been towards me as a, as, a, as a brother, as a club member, I can honestly say you've always been a true brother whenever I've seen you. You've always, you know, kept it 1,000, and that's all that I've ever tried to be back to you and to my organization yes, on the sir. whole. So I really thank you for that. Hey, thank you, sir. You got to keep on doing what you're doing because, like I said, you are touching thousands with this information. You are touching thousands because a lot of these new startup clubs, they need to understand how it's done and how it's done the right way so that, first of all, they don't mistreat their probies. And secondly, they just understand the bike culture for what it was initially established to be, the brotherhood. And that's all I got, gentlemen. You guys have a great evening. Thank you, sir. Thanks for calling in. My pleasure. Okay, that was my man B.I.G., one of the founders of Kings of the South. Oh. Yeah, so that was that was big of him. I appreciate him. I didn't even know he was listening. I think um, my damn, it, it ain't froze, but... Keisha, what up, yo? What up, yo, G? Manure, what it do? Matthew McDonald, my man, Manure Ali, uh, down there in uh, PA. In Pennsylvania down there, man. It's Munir. Munir Ali. Yeah. Yeah, my man. Anyway. All right, well, uh, let me see. If somebody did call. Let me see if I can call them back. 510, where Eric called 510. Uh, here we go. Let me call the person back. My MC chapter has had several unresolved conflicts for years. Can you state your name 
Where do you start to resolve the deep issues? Patricia, what's going on with your man Big Cell? Oh, really? All that? I mean, that's what we do, man. You know what I'm saying? It's that technology, but you gotta get up all this shit, better quit living in the side. You have to talk about foes, they will yeah, be shit. Yeah, I'm getting what it is tomorrow. This is out. Hi, What's going on, Miss Patricia? How you doing? I'm sorry, Mr. Carl, but I'm calling you back. You on live with me and Black Dragon? How can we help you? Black Dragon, I, I appreciate you guys. I love what you're doing. I mean, I just tuned in and I love what you're doing. I mean, this is great. Uh, being around. Uh, MC World for years. What I've learned, uh, especially with the Magic Wheel of San Bernardino, where all my family's at is, you know, you can't, uh, yeah, you can't let the conversation get heated behind the scenes. You gotta keep them up front. When mm. you have people politicking in the background and not talking to the powers that be, what happens is that uh, it builds up and then it explodes. So if you bring it to the uh, forefront, you know, if someone has a problem with someone else, it should be, you know, brought out, not just discussed behind the scenes of each other. Have, have, have you, uh, Patricia, have you, have you saw situations that you felt like could have been handled differently that weren't and because of maybe male ego or pride or it ain't your business type of thing? Absolutely. Uh, we were in a club meeting and my brother broke out into a fist fight in the meeting. Mm. And actually, at that point, that was the best thing that could have happened. And I tell you, once they got done fighting, everybody sat down and we continued the meeting. So you're saying that sometimes that's needed then? The conflict is needed? Sometimes, sometimes there comes a point where you have to show the bully that you ain't going to get bullied no more. Okay. You know, you ever been harassed at school and everybody punking you? And you take the toughest one and just pop them in the mouth and shut everybody up. Mm. Well, see, I, I never, I never um, really had, I never really had that, but Trisha, I, I quit school because of recess because I don't play them kind of games. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, sometimes people can't, you know, they don't know, no, they don't know nothing else. You know, they just need to be shut up sometimes. And it didn't break the club up. Everybody, you know, the meeting went on and. And, you know, nephew was like, you get out your system? It was like, yeah, it was back to business. Oh, okay. But but in my opinion, the MC should have stopped that. The MC's watching this guy getting bullied over and over and over again. It's time for the president to step to that cat and say, this will not be happening in my club anymore. And and that's where, that's where the MC has the responsibility to protect the members. The president's the sheriff, the, the sergeant in arms is the sheriff. These are the folks that are supposed to stop that before it ever gets to that. You got a guy that's getting bullied around and everybody's watching. Why are we watching our brother be bullied? Mm. Okay. You know, some some cases in your life, but some cases people play the victim. They always stir up stuff, and then when it hits them in the face, then they play a the victim. So, it all, you know, every situation is different. So, you know, I agree with you. No one should call a grown man or any man, anybody for that fact, the P word. That's, I mean, when you said that, I was like, whoa. But you know, kidding. nobody should be disrespected. And a prospect is not a tool. What people fail to realize, you making this man into a brother. That you don't part. want your brother to be degraded. You know, this is somebody who's going to represent your club, your patch. He's going to be at your family gathering. Mm. You might even be there to cushion your grandchildren, and you want to disrespect them? That part. What well, that is that, man? Y'all heard Patricia give y'all some real shit, man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not the only ones giving them real stuff. I know. So, I mean, it was cool, man. I mean, but I really, I really, truly appreciate you, man. I mean, I think the West Coast, I think on the West Coast, it's a little different anyway because of the atmosphere and the environment. On the West Coast, we're raised different. I'm from the West Coast. We're raised different, where certain things are just not tolerated. I don't give a fuck if I'm prospecting for your club or not. Just as a man and growing up, we just don't tolerate certain things. And, and again, I'm not saying that it, it, the West Coast is the best coast and all that type of stuff. I'm just saying I'm from being born and raised in Compton, California. And 
it was a little different, I imagine, from me growing up in Compton than it was for the average person that grew up in Atlanta, Decatur, or whatever. I know the, everybody say the ghettos is rough wherever you go. I just think that the West Coast got a little bit of twist on it with all the gang banging and, and shit that they had going on. So it, it would just be different. Yeah. But. Absolutely it is. And, and, you know, people don't realize that, you know, people tend to get upset when you say a motorcycle club is a gang. Mm. Everybody I know who came from the hood got that patch on their back. And they know what loyalty means. You ain't got to like someone to be loyal. You ain't got to like someone to respect them. Mm. You know, I mean, growing up in uh, Southern California, you know, respect people because of how they carried themselves, how they did their business, and how they treated you. And that has nothing to do with liking them. And I think people fail to realize that the set is, is where the, is the street. Everybody that's in the, on the set, most of them came from the street. Hmm, there it is there. You know? So. Well, we, well, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, man. We, um... It is what it is, man. We appreciate you, and I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you like what we're doing. Um, stay tuned. Like I said, we're trying to elevate this thing, and with people like you, and and, and you know, just listening, and, and and all the responsible people we got, we got some good replies and stuff. We can get it there. So, uh, we, you know, it is what it is. We appreciate you. Absolutely. I'll see y'all next year in Atlanta. There it is. There. <laughs> all right now. Bye. Bye. Uh, actually, I'll see. I'll see them this year in February. At the Black that, Shabbat, for that, uh, Shabbat. Yeah, for that freezing cold run. Hey, listen, y'all. I might uh, do that with you this year. You going to do that with us? Nah, it's nothing, man. I mean, I just got Oh, to... listen, we got the cold-ass run. Forgive me for cussing. We got the cold-ass run coming up um, this year from Atlanta to San Diego in February. We'll be riding. Press one. Send a voicemail. Press. What's good, man? It's your man, Big Cell. Black Dragon, you on live. Go ahead. How you doing, man? Uh, your brother's got a great uh, video going tonight. That's pretty cool. I like that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually independent, but I hang out with a few uh, club members uh, thinking about uh, joining the club one day. But anyway, uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, was hanging out with some club members who were down in Ocean City this year, and... Uh, Two of the brothers kind of had a little argument right in the hotel. Kind of blew me back a little bit. Like, wow, these like you're about to ready to go to it. The president was dead. He shut it down right away. Um, everything kind of got quiet after that. And then the next morning, uh, we was actually in two separate hotels, uh, probably a mile apart from each other. And uh, the phone rang about seven o'clock in the morning. And one of the guys I was Room, roommating with uh, as part of he's part of the uh, club he woke up his other brother and said hey man we gotta get up press one is in the room at 8 o'clock and that was to handle what happened the day before mm. so I thought that was pretty good they addressed it right away those two guys hugged each other praised each other you know everything got uh, forgiven at that point and it wasn't dragged down for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, even though the situation was probably going on for a while between these two. And it just kind of fueled right there at the um, yesterday. And then the next day, the president put, you know, put those guys together and, and squashed it right there. I think that's kind of the big thing is to, is to kill it right up front. Don't let it, don't let it keep balling because it keeps balling. It's going to boil off that pot. Hmm. Okay, okay. That's a that's a good one. So now let me ask you this: as an independent, seeing that, did that make you fall in love with that particular MC? Uh, I tell you, Sal, with me, uh, I guess so. Uh, I already had uh, love for the brothers already. Uh, one of the things too. One of the things I, I think this is kind of important too, Sal. Age group. Now these cats I hang out with, I'm 53, and most of them are 53 from 60 down. So let's say from, let's say from 48 to 60. Okay. I have, I 
have hung out with some clubs where you got capped at 60, you got capped at 28. Personally, brother, I don't see how those two go together, especially in a relationship with a woman, right? You know, you 60 and your girl 28. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying those relationships don't work, but it takes a lot of work to keep a relationship like that going. That's how I see it. So you're saying you're saying that what you you're saying with the with the younger bike rider, the chemistry is not going to be there with the older cats because the older cats have more established, maybe more understanding, more to lose, more to understand, or, or is that what it? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. That's what I'm saying. And uh, I, I texted in there earlier about an application. Let me explain what I was saying about the application. I know you guys do an application, but um, I have a pretty tight circle. So, and I learned to keep that circle tight as I got older. You know, what I was doing when I was in my 20s was one thing. In my 30s and my 40s, not my 50s, I would get life a lot different. But I do, let's get back to the younger bikers. And I take it away from the younger bikers, but I do know some clubs. They got some 20 year difference there. And I may go, I just may go on a breakfast run with them. And I didn't enjoy the run because those cats are young. They want to wall out. Um, it's just a whole different world. So you just, you just get very uncomfortable with it. So I think, me personally, if I choose the MC club, I'll definitely be looking at the age. That's, that, that's a big part for me. Okay. So these guys are, you know, they're homeowners. They, um, and, and, not, and I'm not saying young cats not homeowners, okay? But when you get a certain age, you think different. One thing is you don't jump it quicker, jump it right away because you know that, hey, if I hurt this guy, there's consequences behind it. I got so you. So me being 53, getting mad, just want to punch somebody in the face right quick, I'm not going to really do that, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to do that. Now, if I, I, I was 30, you know, I, 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 I'm going to jump up right quick. I, you know, I, I was that 30-year-old with, with a temper at one time. But um, I think a lot of that has to, I think a little bit I can... Uh, uh, play into it, but it would be a nice, would be a nice thing to figure out how you can bring the young brothers and the older brothers together. And one of the main things I think, so is that when it's an issue with a club, what I see, the issue with a club member, address it right then. Don't let it go on, go on. Like the other brother said, you know, I'll do a president of a club watch uh, a probe just getting. Um, you know, um, hurt, you know, breaking his, you know, hurting his mm-hmm. feelings, calling him out different names. How do everybody sit back and let that happen? You're correct. I mean, that's that, that shouldn't be. Uh, but we're all men. At the end of the day, we're all men. If you're 30 year old, you're still a man. If you're 60 year old, you're still a man. So we need to respect each other. And uh, and I think the biggest picture, if it's an issue, deal with it right away. Don't let it go a week, two weeks, three weeks. Deal with the issue. Uh, pull a guy, you know, it, it could be somebody in that club that's going to be the one that's going to uh, have that job. Let's say, uh, hey, man, if it's an issue, hey, Matt, anytime we have an issue with a member, we want you to pull him to the side on a one-on-one, take him out for a cup of coffee, take him out for a beer. If it doesn't get resolved, then you come back to the president, and then we come as an NC club and sit down with the guy. It, 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 could, it could just take that one person, hey, bro, this is not cool. This is what you know. We, we didn't like this here. We're not here to, you know, yell at you, scream at you, but, you know, you you violated the, you know, our laws here. And, and remember, we all we all won here. And, and, and the issue might get straightened out right then and there. But if it doesn't, you can bring a meeting into it. Right? That, you know, that person will come back and tell the president, well, look, it didn't work. I think we need to sit down with the brother. And then, if that don't work, you might, might want to think about letting that guy go because some people, you know, you just can't work with. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. Well, the person, the person that you're talking about, that's the starting an arms job. So that we, you, every MC does have a person that is to be in the forefront of all conflict and resolution, of all conflict and resolution. So that that's the starting at arms. That's probably most of his main job is to know, is to know that part of a member. He is to know, you know, what will tick sell off, what won't tick sell off. You know, what a, what a tick Big John off. Um, so he's almost like a, a psychiatric counselor, damn near per se. But um, he has a very, you know, he has a very, you know, very attentive job in the whole nine yards. So, I mean, that's a, that's a good that's a sergeant at arms, and, and he always has to be around. If you have a sergeant at arms that's not really around a lot, 
it's going to be hard for him to be effective because he don't know, he don't know. But replace him. Yeah, but that's a good that's that's the starting our job. Well, I appreciate you calling in, and I appreciate that that um, that hey. that scope. You know what I'm saying? And these are the different things. And this is what John wanted to do with the subject tonight was first off to speak on it and to know for us to know that there are conflicts going on within the MC, whether it be 99 percent of the one percent one percenters or 99 percent of the traditional non traditional. And you have to have some type of guidance and protocol. And you have to have men in your club that will stand up immediately and get them corrected. Very, very true, man. Hey, look, man, you guys are doing a great job. I've been enjoying your uh, other videos as well. And I think you're in Atlanta, correct? Yes. Okay, I got an uncle down in Macon. So uh, next time I'm down that way, man, I'll hit you up a few days before, man, you know, we could do. I, will, uh, I think you said you don't drink, but we can have to get out to the park or a soda pot one day. That'll work, man. Uh, uh, let me get a large wine punch on the rocks, homie. Uh, he doesn't need all that sugar. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need all that sugar. Uh, some, some, some water will be good for him. Hey, you brother, take care, man. Love you, man. All right. Take care. Tick, you, you say, what do you do when the club beats the brakes off of a member? When the club beats the brakes off of a member? The whole club? <laughs> oh, Lord. good Lord. Mercy. All right, uh, four two four two four two three five five. I see I got my girl Peaches on here. Bruce, Tony Clark, HD Row. I agree with dealing with an issue ASAP. No, he likes to eat. <laughs> that part right there, bro. Don't take me to get a drink. Take me to get something to eat. So, uh, again, if you can, you, is that phone taking call? That number, that number don't work. No, uh, what this phone will take. You ain't got the cord on it. The cord's right there. Here we go with this one again. We don't even know the number to this phone. Down, down. Let me see something real quick. What's wrong with your phone? No, it just cuts me off. Every time somebody well, calls. Why, why did we use your phone in the first place, I man? If it wasn't I didn't know it was going to cut me off. I really man, this know. technology is just killing us. That's all right. We're going to get there. We keep on. Y'all keep laughing right now. We're going to get there when y'all at. <laughs> We're getting there. Trust and believe. We are getting there. Anyway, so, are club brothers allowed to fight each other, John? Club brothers are not allowed to fight one another. Now, we do have a, uh, a thing in the Black Sabbath where you could um, put the gloves on and go against somebody, but uh, that's about it. Oh, you can put the gloves on and go against somebody? You can put the gloves on. Okay. okay. Uh, but you have to... Uh, you have to kiss and make up when it's over. Damn it, boy. Yes, sir. Hold on. We should have wrote that number on the board. Six, seven, eight. Um, three, nine, five. Six, five, three, six. Okay. All right, so we got six seven eight three nine five six five three six. Give us a call in. We're talking about conflict resolution. I know we're a little quiet right now because actually, you guys are coming in with some good topics and some good some good questions that we're actually trying to answer. So, um, six seven eight three nine five six five three six. Give us a call. Let's talk about it. Should um, John say club brothers are not allowed to fight each other, but they do have certain clubs that have rings or boxing rings set up, maybe? Or? Well, I mean, uh, uh, our rule is you have to be surrounded by Black Sabbath, okay. and, and they have to, you get some gloves, and uh, you get uh, three uh, two-minute rounds, something like that, and if, uh, uh, what, what just happened to my dry erase board? What? What? Uh, never mind. Six seven eight three nine five six five three six. Did we use a non dry erase marker on the dry erase board? <laughs> you use the uh, what you call them? Oh my god! You use the uh, permanent marker. Uh, it seems that someone just used the permanent micro marker on the dry erase board. The forty dollar dry erase board. Oh man, that's nothing, man. Forty? I thought it was like a hundred and forty, but anyway, let's make the phone call, man. Six seven eight three nine five six five three six. Try some uh, wind 
Or some 409 maybe might get it off. Holy here. moly. All right, what we got on here, Bruce? Oh, don't forget, subscribe to his YouTube. He's on live on YouTube. What is it? Dryerrace.com. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's uh, Black Dragon National President. You want to you gonna mess it up already? I said. Speaker, hello. You on live with Black Dragon and Big Cell? What's going on, Black Dragon, Big Cell? How y'all doing, man? Hey, what's, what's good up? with you? What's good with you? Yeah, man. Look, we had a little problem with a, a little club that we had here in the Bay. We was on the road. We had a little situation with our club brother, and uh, what happened was one of the brothers. So you said so, so you said the road captain got into it with a, with another member. Yeah, with one of the members because he was telling. Oh, okay. Yeah, with one of the with, with the actually with the vice president on the highway. Okay. He didn't understand that the he didn't understand that the road captain was the president on the highway. Hmm. So yeah. right so right there on the highway they had a conflict. So I mean, how did, how did y'all how did y'all take that? Well, we having a meeting Sunday. It ain't all the way. It ain't all the way resolved yet. Oh, it just happened. Well, I didn't. You know, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was right. Yeah, it, 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 it just happened. It's fresh. Mm. So you know, there's there's a few problems with this for the member who got into the conflict with the road captain. Rule number one is the road captain is the president on the road. I, I'm not sure why everybody wasn't telling him that. Like, dude, you got to do what this guy says. Um, who got beat up? Did the road captain get beat up, or did the uh, vice president? Oh, it was the vice president. No, they, no, they didn't fight. They down to some words that you know that I choose not to say because that's you know that's a little bit too much. I think it was just it, you know at the same time I just think you know like there's a lot that you know that is not being you know that I watch a lot of your videos because I'm new to the club set. So okay. Like, I'm always watching it you know to try to find out and always knowing like it, it was big to hear about protocol because that was the first time I think that I had put that on my message board like yo. You know, so what is the protocol? Does anybody know the protocol? Does anybody have the bylaws? And they're like, oh, yeah, we need the bylaws. And it's like, I think, you know, saying for the most part, I even feel bad about how it happened because everything is now in reverse, you know, because now you have these problems, and if you don't have the bylaws, like y'all said, all the stuff will happen, like all your problems will fall in order after you don't take care of your business the right way. Like if you don't, if you don't prospect the right way, if you don't, if you don't do this the right way and you just get in the club, and all these problems will fall in line, and it don't happen on purpose. It's just if, if you don't handle your business from from day one, then all this stuff is bound to happen. Yeah, well, and that's the biggest thing too, and that's one of the reasons again why me and John started this this whole thing because you wouldn't believe how many people joined the MC without having no knowledge, without, without having no knowledge, not being taught. Anything? Oh, you my homeboy, man. You you know, you got a clean bike. Come on, don't worry about that. We ain't really with the rules. We ain't really with the business. But that's what's that's what's that's what I'm gonna say. It. This was fucking up the MC community. So, yeah. We, I mean, it definitely, it definitely is what it is, man. We appreciate it though, for real. So, I hope that um, I hope that somebody can shed some light on that situation when you guys in the meeting for the vice president. I know you are the vice president, but listen. On that road, you give up that title, and you should be happy to give up that title. Hell, anytime I can get a break from being in charge, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So, and these are good brothers, you know. Everybody's good brothers, and I understand that you would, you know. And, and that's what he said too. I remember he said something on the last one. He said that it is good for the people that have problems that you two need to go to the rest stop and and build a campfire 
Because at that time, y'all don't have no choice but to, you know, say, but to get along and understand and have a conversation and find out where this person is from and find out what, you know, what I'm saying what his makeup is. Because a lot of time, all you do is get on the motorcycle, you turn your music all the way up, he turn his music all the way up. Everybody hitting the throttle, but ain't nobody really having the the brotherhood is why I actually got into it. You know, because like he said, he an only child. I'm an only child. Yeah. I lost my mother at thirty, so I really got in the bike club to be around other brothers. That's why the motorcycle, having a good time, going state to state. That's why I want to be a part of the, you know, saying the club that's going state to state, that's trying to get miles. That's what I wanted to do. That's the whole reason why I bought the Harley. You don't buy a Harley to ride it in the city. You buy mm. a Harley to get on the highway. That's the whole purpose. To be around other that's brothers. Why you that. no Harley. That's the whole purpose. They don't ride good on well, the highway. First off, John don't understand that, so but I do. <laughs> you, you get a victory vision if you want to ride on the highway. I'm just saying. So, brother, brother, listen, bro. I got you, John. He, you, all over his head. You just above his head, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but we appreciate it, bro. Again, man, I hope that situation moves on Sunday. Ride on the highway. Say, man, the man just <laughs> the man just told you he, that's what you do when you want to ride the highway. You get a you Harley. Get a Harley, so you can be you broke down on the side of the highway. No, you somewhere. just heard the man, man. You know what I'm saying? You get a gold wing Listen, if you want to ride. No, sir, you get a, you know, no, sir, you get a gold wing if you just want to look like an old motherfucker. That's what you got. Gold. I, you wing know what? For. What's wrong but, with old people? You gonna be old? I am, and I'm gonna be the oldest nigga on the Harley Davidson, wrinkled as a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey man, we appreciate, we you, appreciate you, bro, it, man. No, Thank you, you know, for calling, uh, man. It is, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, I still appreciate you. We we appreciate you calling, bro. And that's um that one right there is an interesting one. And, and what you should look to see happen is the protocol of the MC uh, mm -hmm. to prevail. And, and unfortunately, VP is, will get a rude awakening, and he, he should be fined and all those things. Um, a lot of times we just we don't know all these, these rules, but it is, um, it is so cool once we get the, uh, once we get the understanding. Yeah. Chick, what it do, man? I know you got something to say longer during the club that already sounds like a good reason to join a club that already exists. I'm hearing that a lot, laugh a lot, but I'm a good rider and I hang out with them and see how things go. Just don't know if I'm ready so to commit this. Says, year. Gregory says, my MC chapter has had several unresolved conflicts for years. Where do you start to resolve deep issues that are layered over many years? Now that's so, a good one. So, um... So generational curses, and it happens. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we uh, kind of, it, 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 it really kinda happens that, because got that now. you know, like the one I remember seeing is you had one guy who was the president, and he got dethroned by another guy, and so yes. these two hated each other. So everybody that this guy brought in, this guy was against. I fell in the middle of that since the mm. five-year-long prospect ship. Okay, because these guys are not going to vote me in because I came in with Under these guys. Guy. So you had this generational curse that basically stopped recruiting from happening in, in that San Diego chapter for years. Mine's not the one I'm thinking was a little different. Where you have a person who was in another club, gets into it with that club, and ends up leaving that club and starting another club. And the issue that those two had, the, the issue that those two had, they want, it, it trickled down into the new members of this club when when the members of this club are saying, hey, well, we don't even know nothing about that. Them people is over there, it's cool. But he said, no, you know, you can't fuck with them because we don't fuck with it. Okay, well, we don't know about your, your beef 10 years ago. You, you understand what I'm saying? But we're, we're brand new to the MC, and that's not our beef. You know, we, you know, but how do you, you know, so you kind of got to. Well, and this also happened uh, in the, in, we, we had a club split, and uh, the other club that split from us, um, Oh my gosh! For for almost two decades, we we have uh, not been getting along well. So um, these are issues. Somebody said it would cost you two hundred fifty dollars to fight anybody in my club. In my club, it costs you more than that. Two fifty ain't bad. I might yeah. pay two fifty. Yeah, I've, I've had cash. Whoop some ass and get an ass whooping. I'm I, I've had some cash tell me here's your five hundred dollars. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I'm no. getting ready to. So we had to up it. They, <laughs> we had to up it. Like, oh, you got five hundred like that? Yeah. Well, well, let's make it a thousand. Hey, <laughs> we get a thesey. Yeah, a thesey. Take this call on this one. All right, here we go. Go ahead, Tick. Hey, what's going on, fellas? 
Hey, what up with it, chick? Up, Man, y'all got a touchy topic tonight, huh? Well, we're just trying to we're uh, trying to walk through it, chick. We're trying to walk through it. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll be listening to all the callers, man, and read the comments, man. You know, everybody, uh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody comes up with an excuse to justify those actions or those circumstances, man. And, uh, you know, you can, you can, um, you know, you can give somebody a pass on breaking the bylaws on fighting, man, but you... You never really know where that's going to go, man. You know, some confrontations, you hope that, uh, like you said, man, they just uh, work it out and they they got that mentality that we family and shit and that it's going to be a squash situation, you know what I'm saying? But it's not always like that, you know what I mean? You never know when, uh, you know, those, those types of situations can lead to you actually burying somebody that... Uh, it's not only love by the club, but love by their family and shit, you know what I mean? So, uh, just in my opinion, man, I just like bylaws, man. I like, uh, I like the fact that that's in there, and I feel like maybe that, that one particular bylaw by Club Brothers Not Fighting might be in there, might actually be written in bud type shit, you know what I mean? And I just feel like anytime one individual or maybe two or a group of individuals in the club expresses their opinion to uh, pick and choose which bylaws they're going to enforce, you know what I mean? It's like, now, now you water it down the shit, you know what I mean? That's that's just how I feel, man. So, Tim, let, let, uh, let, let, let me ask you this real quick. Let me ask you this real quick. As far as, like, again, y'all, just for everybody that don't know, Tick, man, 15 plus years in the game, in the MC community, um, West Coast, so... It's like I said, I was speaking on how different the West Coast is to compared to, like I said, Atlanta. I'm going to just say Atlanta. Um, as far, whereas the testosterone maybe is a little bit more more heavier on the, in, in, in the, on the West Coast because everybody, we were all raised to to not take no shit off of nobody, to, you know, you a man to stand your ground the whole nine yards and don't let a motherfucker talk about you the whole nine yards. How does that like for you, for you guys' prospects, um, well, and I don't even know how you you guys prospect, but how does how does keeping your respect, but being humble enough to take leadership uh, rules and regulation and orders, how does that how does that work? I mean, it's different for everybody, so I man. Like you said, man, some some dudes never really had a chance based on the way they brought up. You know what I mean? They just. Uh, they don't know how to walk both sides of the fence of the game of life, man. They just, you know, all they know is to be stupid, no matter what situation you put them in, man. So some people uh, grow up out of that shit and mature. And as you uh, get older and mature, you have uh, responsibilities and more reasons maybe to live, you know what I mean? Or even live without violence as opposed to when you was young. You know what I'm saying? You was groomed to love violence, you know what I mean? Okay. So, uh... No, I mean, it's just, it's all the individual, man. It's hard to, uh, I just don't know. But I just feel like in a man's club, yeah, you got to conduct yourself as a man. But in the end, it's all recreation, you know what I mean? And uh, now I'm subject to this situation, and I'm, I'm in a position where, you know, either I'm going to bow down or I'm going to do something, you know what I mean? And am I going to do it because of my manhood is hurt or my pride? Or and I'm am I gonna do it at the expense of jeopardizing uh you know maybe even even if you don't get killed or kill somebody or do some uh, act of violence that's so vicious to where you're gonna have some type of legal ramifications. I mean, some people can get away with shit and some people just can't, man. You just now you got a case, you know. Or even at the minimum, man, do you want to just what if you catch the worst end of the fight, man? You really gotta go home to your wife, your kids. Show up to work the next day, maybe drop it on your pants. You're all lumped up and shit. Well, and, and, not to mention, like. and not to mention, even <laughs> come back to the MC after you done got your ass whooped. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it's all your status for life and where you at, man. You know, yeah. can, you, can you walk into work the next day and be like, you know, can you tell your parents or your wife or whatever, man, you know, I'll fight with somebody in a motorcycle club. Come on, man, you love that club. That, that's all you talk about. That's all you do it. What the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? And so it's kind of like, but you know, I don't know, man. It's, I don't really have nothing to say. I wouldn't even go call in. You know what I mean? But 
some people can uh, have words and leave it at that, and just some people, man, they just got to cross that line, you know what I mean? And so, it's just, just, that's all they know, so. So let me ask you this, too, know. real quick. I mean, I, let me ask you this part of a tip. When, when, have you ever been in a situation where you saw a club brother going after another club brother? Did you intervene, or did you kind of look at it as though it's, it's not really my business? Um, I personally didn't have to intervene in the situation because there was enough people in between me and them that uh, did intervene. But I will say this, uh, damn, I hate to speak on some shit, but you know what I'm saying? In the past, now, right around about, it's been about 12 months now, it's been about a year, man. I uh, had a club brother, good brother, man, good family, good guy, man, all the way around. Uh, it wasn't no Hellraiser, none of that kind of shit. I, I mean, I didn't realize if he was. I never seen it to do with respectful and all that shit. But he lost his life to another club brother, man. You know what I mean? And it's like, it wasn't like something happened right then and there that was so quick that people could intervene and stop man. Man, this dude just snapped and did what he did. You know, he, he took the man's life that quick. Damn. But prior to that, though, I mean, the guy was talking to people and saying that he had a problem with that person. You know what I mean? Maybe, I don't know if people intervened in that shit or not. I know I didn't because I knew one time, like maybe a couple of months before this happened, the dude told me he had a problem with him. And I just thought, like, okay, well, I was like, nah, man, that dude cool, man. I don't know what tripping off of, you know what I mean? It was just small talk, and I just really couldn't, I couldn't see that he was going to take that type of action, man. You know what I mean? Damn. I really didn't even know the dude personally enough to know that he was even built like that. You know what I mean? Because he was always straight up shooting straight with me. You know what I mean? So, uh... So because of that, so so now because of that, um, if you hear that, do you go into a different mode now? Uh, yeah, I probably would, man. I, if nothing else, if I would, you know, say what I gotta say, and I probably, uh, you know how it is, man. Guys, uh... In your club, man, they may be cliquish or they may come from the same neighborhood or they might work together. They might have a better rapport with that individual than myself as a member, you know what I mean? So not only would I say something to them, I would definitely make it a point to go approach somebody that I know is, you know, that's your boy, man. You need to, you know, get inside his head, talk to him, you know, figure out where he stand, man, see if he's on the straight. And, you know, if it's that big of a problem, you know, just try to get all the right people involved, man. Yeah, to, okay. uh prevent that kind of shit from happening, man, because once it happens, man, it ain't no, it ain't no turning back, though. I mean, that's, you know how it is. That's it, man. You're dead and gone. You know, and then everything, it's like all the people, all your loved ones you leave behind, man, it's fucked up, you know, and it's all in the end, it's like, damn, you know, it was dangerous enough the motherfucker was riding a motorcycle, you know what I mean? Now the, these dudes he calling his brother shit, you know what I mean? And it ain't even like that. So it's kind of like a rude awakening, man, you know? So, Tim, let me ask you this. Uh, to get to the premise of the question, how would you tell a brother to change his um, uh, uh, why should I not kill my brother whose mind who I've already made up my mind to kill? Oh man, I would just try to you know point out you know for one the repercussions. It's not like you're just gonna gun somebody down and probably just walk away from it, you know what I'm saying? Odds are somebody gonna tell her, you know what I mean? And uh, then you gotta look at everything you got to lose, and then you just gotta look at, you gotta just, you know, if it was petty, it was petty, man. If it's some really petty shit, you know what I mean? I mean, it gotta be some, it gotta be some, you gotta be way out of pocket, man, to wanna kill somebody, you know what I mean? And it's, you just gotta think about tomorrow. I was just, I've been in that situation where I talked to a club brother that, had a firearm on him, was highly upset over an incident that happened. In the end, it was just like a little shove and a finger in the face. And I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all were drinking and, you know, it was kind of hostile to stress all that kind of shit, man. But now you're walking around with that gun, man, and you're waiting on this dude, you're doing too much. You know what I mean? I just talked to him, talked to him, talked to him. I said, man, let's just go inside the hotel, man. And, you know, we went inside the hotel and I went all the way to the room. And I was just like, man, you're doing too much. You know what I mean? And even while I went to sleep, I felt like, damn, man, I hope this dude didn't go back out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, right. But what can you do? You know what I mean? I mean, 
It's all, everybody has some valid points and everybody can look at it. But then, like I said, man, if you make people and make examples out of people, uh, as far as violating the bylaws, this is in the bylaws. And from day one, man, you just stay to that shit and be like, fuck it, man, you ain't in the club. You, you welcome to hang around. You know, hopefully y'all squash that shit. You know, we can exist without you and you can be on the outside looking in and you fucked up. You know what I mean? That's, that's how I feel it should be. But it's always going to be somebody that's going to come with that shit like the other guy was talking about. Oh, man, it's like, it's like in your family when your brothers and your brothers and your fight and y'all just make up and all that shit. No, it ain't like... We ain't fucking family like that. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> recreational shit. And you're a grown ass fucking man. Fuck that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if I be cool with it, in the back of my mind, that shit will bother me. You know what I mean? I can't break bread with this motherfucker no more and really just be cool. It ain't gonna never be the same for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll never be the same. Never. It'll never be the same. It could be cool. We could exist. But it'll never be the same. That's just me. All right, well, we appreciate you, Chick, man, and we hope that somebody was out there that they heard that, that they understand. Like I said, when you, again, when you have those conflicts, man, and when you see them as a brother, you owe that to the brothers or the individuals, and at least to find out, hey, man, what, are you really good? What's going on? And mm-hmm. and, to, and to end that. So right, I, I, I appreciate you that. Appreciate All right, Chick. Right, yeah, man, you know, especially if you sit there, you know a motherfucker wrong, you see him wrong, man. about the MC, but sometimes we give people passes. We don't necessarily realize that the folks that we're dealing with are not uh, always upholding the greatest ideals of the MC. Sometimes people are stingy, sometimes they are uh, jealous or petty or, or, or just bullies or whatever the case may be. And a lot of times when we give these people pass after pass or we look around and we realize that we have been egregiously hurt, especially by someone that we assume should have treated us well, we could be angry and we could want to hurt them. Another thing is sometimes people are just jealous of us. Sometimes people are just coming from nowhere, just want to hurt you for whatever reason, or they're mad and they want to hurt you. The MC has a responsibility to protect you in in the way that the MC is um, uh, a greater, bigger, global brotherhood. It's more than just about me. It's more than just about I. It's more than just about we. The uh, More than just about myself. It's, it's about we. And the MC's responsibility is to police us and keep us friends according to the bylaws. It's to keep us operating within jurisdictions that that make everybody feel safe, everybody feel comfortable, and make everything equal. There shouldn't be the MC sitting around watching someone bully you to, to, to death. There shouldn't be the MC sitting around watching someone disrespect you, call you out your name, call you the P word because you're a prospect or overly terrorize you. A prospect is someone that should be trained and taught that you can chat, you can uh, harass a prospect, you can you can um, uh, uh, haze a prospect, but hazing and disrespect are two different things. One thing I would encourage you to do is remember that people are people, and though you attribute great things to who you think their personality and their character may be, don't allow yourself to get so caught up that when you realize that you've been done wrong or you realize that someone has let you down that you don't get so upset 
Also, remember that if you stand for the highest values of the MC, and that's why I give these speeches to help people understand that the highest values of the MC are what we should be trying to attain, then you can't do anything that's against the MC. It's like Spock. He couldn't think illogically. He couldn't do illogic. It wasn't a part of his DNA. So when you make the MC a part of your DMA, DNA, doing something against the MC becomes something that's against your DNA. You've got to think about why should I not kill the brother I've made up my mind to kill? I should not kill him because it is wrong to do to the MC. The MC is greater than me. The MC is greater than my desire for revenge. The MC is greater. If I kill somebody on this corner right here because they call me Roko P-Word, what have I have done to destroy the MC? Sometimes we just are so egotistical, it's so much about I, it's about me. I can't walk past that guy out there that pushed me. I've got to start a fight that gets the MC in such big trouble in the news everywhere because I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let it go with my brother. I couldn't let it be done. I had to follow him in the alley and shoot him in the back. These are the things that we do when we are possessed with ourselves. The greatest thing that you can do for the MC is possess yourself with the greatness of the MC. Why shouldn't I kill my brother that I've already decided to kill? Because it is against the great order and discipline of the MC. The MC is bigger than you. It is the hive. It is stronger than you. It is more than you. It is everything to which we attribute ourselves to do. So when you hurt a brother, you hurt the MC. When you disrespect a brother, you disrespect the MC. And when you break the heart of, lie to, or treat less than solid gold a brother, you do all those things to the MC. You do all those things to that thing you promise and you swear that you was gonna uphold. That you was gonna uphold when you held your hand up and you you took that um, oath and you prospected for five years or three months or whatever it was that you did, and you promised us you would be a brother. And even though I have wronged you, I've egregiously done something, I took your girlfriend, I screwed your wife. You still can't kill me because I'm your brother and you owe me more because I belong to the MC and the MC's great. Now, hey, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long road to hoe. Some people can't get there. But the idea that the MC is greater than you and you can't do anything to harm it, nothing, should be an idea that you begin to embrace if you want to live your greatest MC life. Mm -hmm. Hey, hell of a closer. What I'm going to tell you is this, man. I'm going to add this. From the perspective of what is it all worth? If you're in an MC where you got that much conflict going on with any member or with the MC on a whole, more than one member, then maybe it's just you're in the wrong MC. And I, and I, know, I know that's hard to believe that you can be in the wrong MC. I know it's hard to believe that I'm in the wrong club. That's hard to believe. Because when you pick this club, this is the club that... That's not an answer. <laughs> There's no life. They won't let you in for five years. That's who you pick. You just hang out. Yeah, you just... You know, They'll yeah. die. But Something. what I'm saying is this, man. If you at that point, man, to where a conflict and you're sitting around there pacing and plotting on a, a club brother or a club member... Or the club in, in general. Then it's just something maybe you need to think about. Because like what John said is that when you join this club, you pledged the oath. You gave an allegiance. And that's another thing too. You guys better start making sure that that part of it is understood. I think a lot of you guys are not understanding that that needs to be understood. From the beginning. From when, when, they, when they go from hang around to prospecting, that needs to be understood. From the beginning, and they need to, and you need to know that they know and that they understand that. And I think that's where it's being lost, at John. I think that's where the MC is being let down at because you're saying, "What you mean? I'm not going to die for this." Whoa! How are the full patch member saying he's not going to die for this? How are the full patch member okay, saying that's the same guy that say I only do this for? Uh, uh, yeah, but how did he get the patch? Well, we didn't ask him if this was a hobby before we gave him that. Maybe that saying. ought to be one of the questions. That's what I'm saying. Is this a hobby to you? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So 
these are the questions that we have to start asking, and these are the questions that you have to start asking yourself before you join an MC or before you let another brother in your MC, in your MC before you even decide to call. Us. Listen, like like my man Tick said, or no, the guy before. I don't have to respect you to honor you as my brother. You feel what I'm saying? To be loyal to you as my yeah, brother. And, and the lady said that too. Yeah, and that's just the lady. So that's the thing. You have to know how to to get along without being engaged. You feel what I'm saying? In other words... I can respect yeah, you for what you do. Yeah, and, and, and that's in that. In the military, we used to and say we respect and the if, rank. If the man. MC needs me, I will be there for the MC. Not for you particular. But for As we. a man, but for the we. But for the we. Yeah, but for the we. So those are the things that I think that we lost, and those are the things that are being lost that we need to get back to where you start making sure that, hey, brother, you do understand that uh, uh, this could be the day that we decide to, to go all in. Are you prepared? So that's the question. Are you prepared to go all in? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you does, your family, does your family know that you have to, Go all in. You feel what I'm saying? Does your wife know that, hey, he loves you, but we need him to go all in over here. And it's a possibility, you know, that when he go all in, he might not make it out of we might, whatever it may be. And I'm not saying that, that the MC is on that level. You know, your MC might not ever be on that level because all of y'all might just be like, shit, man, we good. <laughs> Rick Martin said, just like you wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize your blood family. You don't want to do anything to well, no, we got, we got, you got blood. I, I'm going to say this. Now, this might be. You ready for this? I'm, I'm listening. Your your MC family is stronger than your blood family. Yeah, I said it. It can be. <laughs> it, it surely can be. I said it. Because a, a lot of us are hanging out with our MC family more than we more see than, our blood That's what family. I'm trying to tell you. Plus, some of your blood family can, can kind of be. Yeah, it's kind of rough. But, but what I'm saying is this, man. Let's get back to where we start understanding that this thing is what it is. It's all or nothing. Mm. It's all or nothing. You can't be a little MC or some MC, you know, or or like they say, riding season MC. Mm. There is no such a thing. Not at all. Well, not a traditional MC. There is no such. If you in a club and y'all got a riding season, then. You know, it's well, not, but you know, up in Chicago and stuff. Listen, listen. There, is, I know cats from Chicago who, if 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 it's rideable, then they gonna ride. Okay, but understand this: if I live in a if I live in a in a town that's f four months of the year snow, then guess what? I'm gonna be at the other nine, the other other eight months. I'm gonna be on my motorcycle, but because I know for the four holy months, holy moly, four. You know, I'm just saying, Chicago, my man, juice next level. Hell, they, you see them everywhere. When they can't ride, they still doing MC shit. They, right. You know, because the MC, don't get me wrong, riding is the biggest part of the MC, the biggest part. But if you don't think if me and Black Dragon had to go support somebody in the best way that we effectively could do it, and him get back to work, and me get, and we had to keep car, that car rolling, then that's what the fuck. And you gonna sleep and I drive? That's what we are gonna do. Because that's so what that's, we do is we pull our motorcycles and when we get. Close, oh, no, so we no, pull we over, no, sir. No, and then no, we sir. ride in, and then we roll trailers. In the dirt. We roll in the dirt on the everybody that I know. Listen, everybody that hey! I know has a trailer. Everybody that I know that has a trailer got a boat on it. Trailers are for boats, man. Uh, yeah, you don't see them selling trailers at Harley Davidson. Maybe they sell them at the Honda, the Gold Wing spot, I, or, I, or the I Victory, Victory spot. Vision. Okay, well maybe they sell them. No, they don't sell Gold Wing trailers. The Gold Wings don't break well, down. Well, I'm like just that. saying. So if if they don't sell trailers at the spots, then that mean it they don't, don't sell trailers at the Harley Davidson. No, either. they don't no, no they don't. And you never you would never pull up at a Man, Harley Davidson. Like, I'm going to look. Yeah, please I'm go look. I'm taking You're not gonna picture. find a trailer at the Harley can't Davidson see spot. That. But but anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying is this, man. So today's topic, how to resolve conflict or how to keep from killing your brother. Yeah. The first thing of it is is make sure that your brother understands that this right here is to be valued. It is to be honored. It is to be respected. It is to be put on the highest plateau possible. Like John said, if that be the case, then conflict can never exist because the MC will be your constant reminder that, hey, I got to find a way to get along with this cat. Or I got to at least find a way to have an understanding with this cat. I might not be able to get along with him, but we're going to have an understanding. So, 
again, take it, use it, understand what it may be, and, and just find it away because, like I said, we have to get this thing back to where brotherhood is understood, brotherhood is honored, brotherhood is the is the is the root of it all, brotherhood. And in brotherhood, I'm not gonna always be happy with my brother, but I can't I, kill him. But I can't kill him, no matter what. I can't kill him, even though and that don't mean we can't kick him out the club. Then. Oh, but if you ain't in the club, you ain't a brother. Yeah, he's not a brother. I had a situation. I mean, we don't even get into that. <laughs> but, yeah. So, there it is there, man. That's our take on it. Uh, preacher said in New York, we ride as long as we can see the road through the snow. And I Can you that. see the road through the snow? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, where the snow is on the side and the road is down. And you, Boy, you got to yeah. be, like, narrow. I want it now. You can ask Snowman. Now. This is a true story. You can ask Snowman. Snowman bet me a hundred. The year, it was a year or so it rained and it snowed in Georgia. Snowman bet me a hundred dollars that I wouldn't ride to the clubhouse in the snow. That was uh, twenty uh, thirteen, whatever it was. No, twelve, thirteen, one of them years. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that was that the, was when we rode across America. That was America. the craziest and the worst hundred dollars that I, I made it, but I'll never do it again. That's when we rode across America to the. Uh, I'm just, yeah. I, well, the videos are there. Yeah, just like my video of me kicking that sign. I'm just, <laughs> anyway, man, it's been fun tonight, man. I hope you guys learned some conflict resolution. <laughs> Again, man, <laughs> conflict resolution. I kicked the sign, man. Understand this: if you respect the MC, then you can never have a conflict that would want to cause you. That I can to the listen, man, listen. Nobody in these, nobody on, nobody watching your channel, my channel, the channel. Hell, I can't. Donald Trump ain't gonna even believe that. Donald motherfucking Trump wouldn't even believe that you kicked the sign nine feet in the air. Standing still. Man, I, the picture's right here, dog. Dude, everybody know about Photoshop. And then the way it is, your face is hidden. My the face. hat coming down. So we ain't buying this shit. Hey, man, enjoy y'all night, man. We gone, man. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you feel what I'm saying? We, it is what it is, man. Hey, 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 Bad Breed Motorcycle Club in Romania, man. Hey, what it do, what it hey, do, man. What's what up? it do, so... We love y'all. Stay tuned. And don't worry about looking at for no picture of him look at, look kicking no sign. At no fucking nine feet in the air. Hey, Black there. Dragon National Press on YouTube. Please go and like my page. FHO Atlanta GA YouTube. Give it a subscribe to the pages. Don't just like the videos, but subscribe to them. Subscribe to the pages. These are the only things that we got, that we have to keep us going, man. We love y'all. Tony, what it do, man? Confident resolution. Especially you, Tony, going into a new club. You new club members, these are the things you should be asking. Am I all in with this club? Does my family know I'm all in? Mm. With this club. And those are important questions. When I say all in, will you die for your MC? Prospect Bible. Prospect PRO. He got all Prospect kinds of Prospect Bible. Motorcycle, uh, motorcycle Club Public Relations Officers Bible. And the Prospect Bible for Women's Motorcycle Club. Next book coming out is the Sergeant in Arms Bible this November. Love you all. Thank Have you for fun. tuning in. Sorry we was late, but it was John. Plus, y'all said we can't eat on we can't eat while we man, filming and shit. So, so hungry, I don't know yeah. what to do. So let me get up out of here, man, because he finna eat and uh, and then like being around a fat a fat dude when he eat. I'm man, not, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you fat as a motherfucker. Hey, man, we going, man. Yeah, I've gotten. Yeah, okay, bye. This is this.